Hey everybody, in this tutorial I want to show you how to use Python to create grease pencil objects in Blender. Before we get into how to generate these objects with code, let's take a quick look at how grease pencils are used in the UI so we can get a better idea of what they're made of. You can use grease pencils in either general or 2D animation mode because grease pencil objects, while designed to look like 2D line art, are actually 3D objects. Grease pencil objects can be interactively created in draw mode. As you draw with the mouse or the pen, strokes are added to the selected grease pencil object. Strokes are always associated with a layer on that grease pencil object. Layers can be used much like Photoshop layers to control visibility, depth, and to help organize the various parts of the drawing. Strokes are also associated with the current frame. Moving to a different frame draws the strokes on that frame only. Individual strokes are not shown in the outliner. Instead, the user can access the individual strokes by switching to the edit mode and selecting them. Strokes are composed of points, which can also be selected and manipulated in edit mode. Grease pencil strokes, when created from scratch, display in a light gray color. This is because the grease pencil objects need a material to render properly. To recap, the various parts of the grease pencil workflow we care about most are the grease pencil data object, layers, frames, strokes, points, and materials. In the Python API, these various components are structured as a nested hierarchy. The grease pencil contains layers, the layers contain frames, and so on. Each component has a class in the Python API that can be used to create and edit that particular component. To see how these all work together, let's create a simple example. To begin with, let's set up Blender so we can use Python and the Grease Pencil workflow together. After launching Blender and the splash screen comes up, select the 2D animation mode. Move your cursor down to the lower right corner of the viewport until it turns into a crosshair icon, and then drag that to the left to split the view. From the panel selector pull down for the right viewport, select Text Editor. Then hit the New button, which will create a new temporary text file and will give us a place to enter our code. When you launch Blender with 2D animation option, the interface defaults to draw mode, but in order for the Grease Pencil Python commands to work, we need to switch to object mode. If you're running your code and you get cryptic messages about the context being incorrect, it might be because you're not in object mode when you ran the code. This starter scene also contains a default Grease Pencil stroke. Since we'll be creating our own grease pencil objects from scratch, we can delete the default one. The last thing we want to do is toggle the system console window. This will allow us to see any tracebacks if we have any errors in our code. As with most Blender scripts, we'll start by importing the VPY library. This gives us access to the Blender API. Now we're ready to build our grease pencil objects. We start by creating the Grease Pencil Data object. We do this by calling the Grease Pencil's new command on the Blender's data object. Pass it a string for the name we want to call the object. Running the command at this point does not produce anything in our scene because we need a couple of extra steps before we can see anything. Here we've taken the Grease Pencil Data container and added it to a list of objects in the scene using the object.new method. Then we link that object to a collection. Now our Grease Pencil object should show up in our outline when we run the code. Notice that the Grease Pencil object doesn't have any layers. It's as bare bones as it gets. I should point out that there's an alternate way to create the Grease Pencil object using the object operator gpencilAdd. This method produces the same results in your scene, but it has a couple of disadvantages. First, it runs slower than the first version I showed you about 10 times slower in my timing tests, which can be a deal breaker if you want your tool to run interactively. The other drawback is that because the command is an operator, it doesn't return a Python object for the item it just created. This means that you have to query the scene and create a Python object from it before you can reference it in other places in your code. That being so, we'll use the previous way in this example. The next thing we need to do is add a layer to our grease pencil object. Here we call the new method on the Grease Pencil Layers attribute and pass it the name we want for our layer. If we run the code, we now have a layer on our Grease Pencil called Lines. Now we can add our frame to our layer. We do this by calling the new method again, but this time on the Frames attribute on our Layer Python object. 
The argument here indicates the desired frame number. In this case, I'm passing it frame 1. If we run it now, we get a keyframe on our first frame. Rather than passing it explicit frame numbers, it can be more convenient to have it created on the current frame, no matter which frame you're on. We can do this by passing in the frame current value from the scene context. Now that we have the first three parts of our grease pencil created, we can start adding strokes and points so that we can actually see something in our viewport. To add a stroke, we follow a similar pattern as before. We call the new method, but this time on the frame.strokes attribute. Creating the points between which the stroke will be drawn is a two-step process. First, we have to indicate the number of points we want in the stroke, and then we have to indicate the 3D position of each point in our stroke. Each point we add to the stroke is contained in a list, so we can indicate which point we want to modify by its index number. To set its position, we use the points.co attribute. I'm not sure what CO stands for, maybe coefficient, but at any rate, this is the attribute that positions the point you're seeing. Notice that I'm using a three-item tuple to specify the point's position. This is because, as I said before, grease pencils are actually 3D objects. So when we specify a position, we need to use all three axes. In this case, because the camera is facing down the y-axis, I don't need to worry about the y-axis values and can leave them at zero. To position the second point, I use an index of one instead and assign a value to its .co attribute. At this point, we should have everything we need to see our stroke. So let's run the code and see what we get. It may seem at first like nothing has happened, but if we zoom in closely, we can see that the line is there. It's just very thin. To make it easier to see, we can adjust the line width attribute on the stroke object. The Python API reference doc shows a variety of stroke attributes that can be modified. But for now, while we're in here, let's set the start and end caps of our stroke to flat instead of round. When adding a lot of points to a stroke, it can sometimes be easier to store the position values in a simple Python list, and then enumerate through that list to assign the position values to each point. Our stroke appears to be light gray because the grease pencil object hasn't been assigned a material yet, and therefore won't render properly. So now we'll add a material to our grease pencil object to take care of that. Once we have our basic stroke working, we can customize it by adjusting the stroke and point attributes. For example, the line thickness can be adjusted on a per point basis by setting values on each point's pressure attribute. This acts like a multiplier to the stroke's line width value. Likewise, we can change the vertex color of each point. In this case, we use a four item tuple indicating red, green, blue, and alpha values on a scale of zero to one. By default, the strokes we make are open, that is, the last point doesn't connect back to the first point. To close the stroke, we can set the useCyclic attribute on the stroke to true. Our stroke is now closed, but you'll notice that the connection between the first and last part looks a bit wonky. That's because we set the end caps to flat. To correct that, we'll set them to round. If you want to fill the stroke with a color, we need to do that on the material using the show fill attribute. To change the color, you use the fill color attribute on the same material. You can do the same for stroke color by using the color attribute. As you begin to work with point, stroke, and material attributes, there are some subtleties that have to be taken into account. For example, we are setting the vertex color on the points as well as setting the color in the material, so the stroke color ends up being a sort of additive color of the two. Also note that when we start modifying the vertex color or adding fills, the point order becomes important. 
Points are drawn in the order that they are in the list, with newer points being drawn behind the older ones. Likewise, the fill may draw in unexpected ways if you have an unusual shape as we do here, which could be corrected by refining the point placement. Now you should have a general idea of how to create crease pencil objects with Python. In the next video, we'll start putting this knowledge to good use and learn how to start creating geometric shapes and modifying them with noise. Thanks for watching.